Hi, this is Shana, and this is another Pick a Card reading. This is a message of inspiration. Some of you have asked me to do readings that are inspirational, so I decided to do this one for today. Uh, other ones will come up as well. Actually, I wanted to do many more readings at this time, but unfortunately, I haven't been able to. But I hope everyone is okay. I hope you and your loved ones are safe and healthy, and I wish you all the best, okay? So we have three possibilities here. We have three piles. We have pile number one with a blue stone, pile number two with a black stone, and pile number three with the clear stone. Well, it's lapis lazuli or lapis lazuli, depending. And this is obsidian and this is crystal quartz. So as usual, take your time to pick your pile. You can stop the video if you'd like, and I will see you in a couple of moments. If you picked pile one with a blue stone, this is your reading. So you have the cards, listening, then we have lost love, surrender, healing, release. This is number 35. Then we have number 31, beauty and the beast, unconditional love. And then we have number eight, be the hunter, not the hunted. And we have done number 16, Angel, Balthiel, and Rose Quartz, Heart Healing. Now, the first thing that I see here, and probably you see too, according to the cards, is there, there is a lot of sadness here. And for some of you, it could be like um, a, a relationship that is coming to an end, which is quite obvious here with the card Lost Love, or you're having difficulties with a relationship, or you're actually uh, recovering from a lost love, you know, because sometimes when in love things do not go well, it can take some time for one to recover completely. And maybe this time, so many of you may be at home at this time, so it's the right time for this to be cleansed, to be released. And it's a process. It's not always easy. Many things come back to the surface, but it's a process. And what I get here, because remember, this is a message of inspiration, is that this process is going to be successful, that you're on your way to heal your heart. Now, another thing is, another aspect is that you may feel overwhelmed. You may feel overwhelmed by what is expected of you at this time. Many of you may have to take care of uh, your children, your family, relatives, friends. And it could be that you feel there's a lot of responsibility on your shoulders. What I get from this as well is like you are willing to do this. You have a very beautiful heart, a very kind heart, a very graceful soul, and you want to do your best to help other people. You want to be there for other people. But what the cards are also saying, especially here with be the hunter and not the hunted, is like at a certain point, a certain time, certain moments, you feel like in given situations that you're being taken care, uh, taken care, beauty, excuse me, I'll try that again, you're being taken advantage of. It's not that the people mean it um, in a bad way, it's just like, it can be that they're just taking you for granted, taking your strength and you're caring for granted, and they start demanding more and more, but this is a feeling that you sometimes get. Okay, and you are willing to comply, you're Ill willing to help other people to be there for them, but sometimes it just seems to be too much, and that the others are taking your help and your effort for granted and not putting their weight into the situation. And then this card here, Be the Hunter, is saying, Hey, you can tell the other people when to stop or when you need their help. 
So then with being the hunter is taking the situation into your own hands, taking the situation in control or getting control of the situation so that you do not become a victim of the circumstances. And what the cards also tell you is take some time for yourself. And we have here this listening card. Taking time for yourself, just for yourself, even if it's just 10 minutes. Some of you will be at home with children. And of course, children demand our attention 24-7. But still, if you can find a moment just for yourself, just to relax and to switch off from the world, switch off from everything that is happening. You'll need this time to replenish your energies, to recharge your batteries, so you can be there for other people. And there is a lot of grief here, as I, I was uh, telling you again. It can be that someone really passed away from your family or circle of friends, um, and can be that it is a, a lost love, a lost relationship, or something that you know is really coming to an end, or you have to let go of completely. And that's why you, you need this time for yourself to most, because this is the healing energy here. Healing is taking place, but you have to allow it to work. You know, you have to allow yourself to receive it. You have to allow your heart some time in order to recover. So it's really here, the inspiration is to rest. The inspiration is to have self-care. This is uh, now something more important than ever. But it's not just physical self-care, it's also emotional and psychological self-care. Because not only we have like our family uh, obligations, and I wouldn't call it obligations because we do it from the heart, but still... It can be very demanding, but also being bombarded by the news. And uh, we're also taking care of our friends, even from a distance. And there's a lot going on. Actually, although humanity could take this time to rest, actually, we're being even more active than we used to be because we're in contact with everyone and uh, listening to every news, doing yoga classes online or what, uh, what have you. It can be anything. So we really need this time to switch off and just listen to yourselves. Listen to our thoughts because we have also many thoughts um, working on a more subconscious level that we don't we're not even aware of them and the moment we just relax just start breathing calmly and away from the world you know even if it's just closing your bedroom door and just have five minutes for yourself you start realizing all these thoughts in your head that may even be weighing you down negative thoughts and here you can be aware of them and decide to ignore them or Put them away of the, your program, yeah, be, before it starts like to be a mechanism that runs on its own. And by doing so, this is going to be very, very specific for some of you, you know. So take as it resonates, take it as it applies to your situation. This is going to be very specific. Some of you who have lost a loving people um, from circles of friends or even your family, like that these people have passed away, you may be, when you rest, you may be getting in touch with them. You may be getting a message from the other side, from your loved ones on the other side. And don't be afraid, you know, if you get like signs or, you know, and signs from the other side could be a smell that you identify with that person, could be a song that you hear, it could be even, some of you can even hear the voice, you know, or or you start thinking of this person very intensively. Don't be afraid because it comes in love, just wants to tell you that this person is okay, is doing well, and that this person is there with you, supporting you through this time. So it's very positive, it's very loving. And, um, and there's an unconditional love here at play. And this unconditional love that's coming your way, you're going to be able to receive this unconditional love from the universe. It's always there. But if you start listening, if you start resting and opening up to yourself and to the soul of the world, you're going to sense and you're going to feel this uh, unconditional love that is there for you 
to tap in anytime you need it. And you're going to be able to rest. And even if you have a lot to do and if you have a lot to uh, take care of, you're going to do it with more energy because you know you can tap in into this universal love, into this unconditional love anytime. And this is what also gives you the strength to be the hunter, to be the one in control. And this, because you, if you start listening to yourself and listening to your thoughts, you're going to be aware of what, what really is going on around you. You know, like you can see through people, you can see through their actions, you can see like all the manipulations or mechanisms that may be taking place and you will be able to stop it if there's something, you know, that drains your energy too much. But this also comes, you know, this is so beautiful. This is so beautiful because it all comes from a place of love. It's like you're tapping into this beautiful love and you're sharing it with other people. And here with the heart healing, this card here is not only you healing your own heart and you're in need of it. And again, I'll say it again. You need time and space for yourself. If, like I said, even if it's just closing your bedroom door for five minutes, 10 minutes would be ideal for a start. But if you cannot, it's too long, five minutes. Just give that time to yourself, you know sit on the bed and stare at the wall or close your eyes. It's just five minutes for yourself. This is very important. But it's like this heart healing is also telling you that you have this capacity, this ability of healing other people with your love. And this is so beautiful. It's really starting to move me because well, while tapping into your energy right now, I just feel this love. I just feel this caring, this this beautiful heart that really wants to share joy, wants to share love with other people. You really care for the people around you. You really care like for the world, you know, and if you could, I have the feeling that you would go around the world helping everyone in need, even if it's just giving them a smile, even if it's just giving them a, a kind word. You're a very kind and graceful person. And that's why, again, this is so important. You have to take care of yourself. You have to give yourself five minutes. Because even unconditional uh, universal love can be weighed down when the situation starts to be very stressful or too demanding. And again, then this could give rise to negative thoughts. And just having five or 10 minutes on your own, if you cannot have more than that, you know, to cleanse your energy. And if there are days where you feel sad, if you feel overwhelmed, it's okay. If you are a person, and I have the feeling you might be this kind of person, that you feel that you always have to function, you always have to be strong, you always have to be there for the others. Acknowledging that you're not doing well, that you're feeling sad, can be quite stressful as well. But just allow it. You know, if you're having a bad day, you're having a bad day. And to tell you the truth, yesterday I really had a bad day. Like, you know, but it's it was just that day, and today I'm feeling a lot better. And I had to allow it. I had to accept it, that I was not feeling well, that I was feeling sad. I didn't have any particular reason, but sometimes it's just stress that is accumulating, and we don't even notice that it's there until it just overflows. So just, if you're having a bad day, take, take that day for yourself, cope with it the best you can, but accept it. Don't go against it because the next day will be better. Again, the best day, the best way to cope with that is also resting. Because if you're having a bad day and uh, you're really sad or overwhelmed, is a sign that you're going too far, you know, with your strength, that is uh, too much is being demanded from you. And and this is the sign of this card as well. This card is also asking you, is do you have the feeling that your heart is being overstretched, uh, overstretched, right? That your goodwill is being overstretched. That's the moment where you have to stop 
and reconsider what's happening, see through what is happening and take control again. But here the inspiration is really to relax, to take time for yourself and know that there's a lot of love around you. There's this unconditional love. And this is something that, again, I'll repeat this, is that it's part of your being. You're someone that loves the other people just as they are. No matter how they present themselves, no matter how they look like, no matter um, personality traits, you just love them. And this love is coming back to you again. So this unconditional love is also is flowing to you and through you, especially here with this card, uh, um, heart healing. And there are beautiful things coming your way. So this sadness here from lost love, um, this sadness will go away as well. This card just say, just surrender it, let it heal, you know, releasing it. Just accept it that it's there. Sometimes it's the only thing we can do. Just accept it, respect it, and acknowledge it, and it will heal um, on its own terms. But again, with these two cards, and I'll repeat again because it's so important to you, is you have to rest, right? You have to find some time just for yourself but it's not you're closing yourself in a room with your mobile and uh, reading all the social media no because that's also stressful reading and getting in touch with social media is fun but it's a lot more stressful than you think and so away from social media for five or ten minutes and just rest just be alone with your own thoughts with your own feelings so that this love can flow to you and through you in a more constructive way. But the cards are saying you're doing wonderfully. Even through your pain, even through your um, tiredness that you may be feeling, love is there for you, energy is there for you, and you're very, very much loved. And anytime you need love, you just have to close your eyes, five minutes of silence, and you'll tap into this universal love and have that strength again to face whatever comes. And a lot of healing is going through your heart to others. So just the fact that you exist, you're healing other people. I want you to be aware of that. You don't have to do anything special or extraordinary. Just the fact that you exist is healing for other people. And this is very important that you know as well. So thank you for existing. Thank you for coming to planet Earth. Thank you for trying to do your best, no matter how tired you are. But get some rest, please. So pile number one, this was your reading. I hope it resonates and inspires you. And um, thank you so much to all that watch, like, and comment my videos. And also to all that subscribe to my channel. It means a lot to me. And I'm not doing private readings right now, but probably next week. But I'll let you know when the time comes. So if you'd like to follow me on Instagram, just click on the link in the description box below. So thank you so much and have a wonderful time. Stay safe. I wish you the best. So if you chose pile number two with the obsidian, this is your reading. So let's see what the cards are. We have the mystic. We have perception. Wait. Beyond the Veil of Illusion, 39. We have 20, the littlest fairy. Appreciate the beauty and value of the exquisite and small. And we have number 36, Listening for Truth. So let me get here some more space. Just give me a second. There you go. Then we have Number 28, Ascended Master Lao Tzu and Scene Sight, Descending Power, Crystal Masters 333. So this pile is very special. Pile number one, we have the healers. 
Pile number two. You are psychics and mediums. So first we have the mystic, then we have perception, listening for truth, and then descending of power. The thing is, you are, when it comes to psychic powers, when it comes to spirituality, when you when it comes to mediumship, you are a, you are a natural born medium. You don't have to do anything or learn anything. You, you just have it. That's the first thing I want you to know, right? You just have to trust your insights. You just have to trust the messages you get because you're a natural. You were born like that, right? And it doesn't matter how old or young you are. In another reading, um, I explained my view on it when it comes to these indigo children and whatever they are. It's like... At Indigo children, we had them since the beginning of times. Children with um, special powers, special abilities, and special talents. We've had them throughout history. So, no matter how old you are, you were born with these abilities. And you know that. But you don't trust your abilities very much because we have the littlest fairy. And... Um, and sometimes you feel like her, you don't know what to do with your knowledge, you don't know how to use it, or you feel you're not good enough. And, and, um, and also the feeling that um, people won't believe you, or you're afraid of showing your abilities because what society would say, what your friends would say, uh, they would say you were crazy. And there's another part of this, and um, and please don't be mad at me when I say, is you can also be somewhat, um, I'm forgetting the word, but I'm trying to remember. Um, I forgot the expression, but I'll remember in a second. But you may be uh, um, afraid, although afraid is not the right word, like because of the work of other people like do you think the other people do it better or they're more, more successful or more popular and and sometimes you even know that the work of other people isn't really spiritual at all but because they say the right things and they have the right attitude and uh, they can sell their image or sell themselves better um then it, you don't think that you can do that and you know you cannot compete against that and but still my message to you here and from the cards is acknowledge that how you feel respect that but they want you to know that you can do in this respect anything you want again this is you you are a natural you, you're a natural talent you just have this connection with the other side with the other with the, uh, with the spiritual world, it's like for you is something natural. You've been communicating with, uh, with the spiritual world since you were born on a conscious level. Maybe some relatives of you uh, who passed away, you still have conversations with them, even if it's just in your head, but you know it's real. You can feel them. They're there. So here at this point, if you don't relate to this at all, then this is not your reading. But I have the feeling many who choose pile two will understand what I'm saying. And it's, this is just uh, the first part is just to confirm that you have that power, you have that ability. If you were doubting in any way, it's like this is the confirmation. You have it. And... Now, what the cards here say, as an inspiration, continuing on that path, is uh, trust your intuition. Yeah, trust your intu intuition and integrate your intuition and also your abilities, your psychic abilities, into your life. Maybe you're doing it as already as um, as a job, you know, as a, a income possibility like for instance youtube videos or you're giving readings or you're attending uh, special events that include these kind of activities and 
integrated, but also integrated more in your life, you know, because sometimes we, we put it aside and it's like I have my normal life and there's this spiritual. And what the cards are saying, there is no difference between your normal life and spiritual life and the contact with spirit. They're always intertwined. Either you are aware of it or not. So the cards are inviting you here to be even more aware of it because you trusting this um second sight or sixth sense will make your life even easier because you have um, a better view of what to do and when to do it and what is good for you and what is the right path for you and also the right way of helping other people. So incorporate it, integrate it into your life even more. And, um, and it's like you can see through people, you can see through their words, you can see also the truth behind what is happening in the world, behind the news. It's like you have a feeling there's something going on. I'm not referring especially to our, situ our present situation at the moment I'm recording this, but you just know the truth. Even if you know exactly what, you know if it is true or not right? You just have this sense that no one can fool you, actually. And you always know. You always know. But you do this also in a very loving way. It's not a, For you, it's not a question of power. It's not a question of being better than the others. And it's also not a weapon of manipulation because you don't need that. You, you, you don't even understand that language of manipulation. But you also don't like to be manipulated and you don't allow it. And this is your real strength. This is here with this card of perception because you see beyond the veil of illusion. And you can also communicate it. See here, you have the third eye and the fifth chakra activated to throw chakra. And here we have the butterfly. So you have a lot of transformation here because you're also learning how to express what you see uh, through these other senses. You're learning to express it in a way that people can also absorb it, whether people can understand it and can work with it as well. Because it's, again, this is not a question of manipulation. It's not a question of being right. It's how can I help other people and how can I help them help themselves, right? And you're learning this. Again, you're incorporating all this knowledge. You're incorporating your abilities and you're transforming as well in a, in a way of being a better channel in order to give hope to other people, in order to inspire them to be their true selves. You know, it's not to better themselves because we're perfect. We just forget to be in our true potential. We don't even acknowledge our true potential. And doesn't have potential here in this case has nothing to do with how much money can I earn, how many medals can I win, how many cars I can buy, nothing. It has to do with being all that you can be within yourself and with others. And it's a beautiful thing. And for many of you, I'm getting this energy that you're learning to be this and you're also learning to inspire others to become the best that they can be, right? And to expand themselves, expand their souls, their knowledge, and their perceptions again. So there's a lot of work here, a lot of transformation also within yourself. You're really getting a grip of your talents in a very, very positive way. The other thing here is, I'm going kind of card by card. I'm just feeling inspired to do this. The other thing here is with this card, the, the other meanings of this card, they are very beautiful um, and it's like, I have the feeling that you also may be feeling somewhat overwhelmed and even frustrated, although that's not a direct meaning of the card, but it's like, um, you have the feeling probably, um, if it doesn't resonate with you, it's okay, you know, just skip this part, but I have the feeling that you 
wanted to take advantage of this time and to do greater things, to be more active, to put yourself out there more. It's like this urge, this inner urge to be more active, to be more successful, to to reach more people. And, and somehow there's something there that you can't. And it's not like physical it's not like the world doesn't allow you to so it's not it's not external it's something internal that's kind of blocking you and what the cards are telling you here is if you feel this blockage and you start punishing yourself so to say criticizing yourself like saying to yourself you're procrastinating you're lazy you're this and this the cards tell you not to do this especially this one here be loving with yourself if you feel this kind of inner blockage stopping you or from doing something, it's because you shouldn't be doing it at that moment, right? Because the time is not right and because there's a, a better way or a, um, other people to work with, depending on your case. But what the card is saying, take that seriously. If you feel like this... It's like, a, a, especially on, uh, on the heart chakra, you just feel like a blockage. But it's not bad. It's not painful. It's like you feel that, like you cannot do it at that moment or on that day. Just respect that. Instead of fighting it, instead of then criticizing yourself, accept it like, hmm, I think this is a sign, right? Because it's a different feeling from procrastination. It feels a bit different, you know? It's something that really comes from the inside telling you not to do or... It's a feeling and then respect that. And that's why it's very important to listen to yourself, to trust your intuition and to trust your own rhythm and the rhythm of the world. Because this feeling that's stopping your heart or stopping your heart and it would die. Forget that. Sorry. That uh, is like not letting you move forward with uh, your projects or your ambitions at that moment. And I'm, I'm afraid I'm stressing that at that moment. It's not forever. It's just at that moment. It's because it's also working with the energy of the world, with the soul of the world. And it's like just telling you to wait until the moment is right, until the right people will see it. You know, it's like it's trying to juggle, it's trying to organize your energies with the other energies of the world so they will work in sync. So respect that. This is really important. And I really have the feeling that some of you should know this or should be reminded of this. Because again, you are a natural talent. Most of this, what I'm saying, you already know. But it's just a confirmation and inspiring you to trust your inner feelings. So this card here is telling you to really go slow and go small. It's like the moment when you go to into the world will come, like full power, full ablaze and phoenix-like. It will come, but it's not now. And especially if you don't feel it, especially if you're tired, especially if you're feeling drained, if you, you still haven't found your own rhythm, then go small, step by step, follow your rhythm and appreciate every small step you take. Love every little minute, every little thing, every little detail that moves you forward or it's just that in the present. Just acknowledge it, appreciate it, love it. Yeah, this is very important here. Don't go against yourself. Appreciate where you are and love yourself. Then we have listening for truth. Now, again, this is you're able to see the truth in the situations. Again, all these three cards are talking the same. Yeah, so it's a confirmation after confirmation after confirmation. And but you also you don't let yourself, <clears throat> excuse me, you don't let yourself be scared easily. And again, there is a lot of um, information going on right now in the media, social media, friends. There's so much uncertainty. There's so much fear. There's so much information. And of course, in, a, uh, in, a, in our age where there's so much fake news and, uh, and contradictory information, sometimes we don't know what to believe, not even when it comes from a re reliable source. We always like a bit um, mistrustful, right? 
we're always like suspicious of what's coming or what coming but you are able to discern this you don't let yourself be fooled easily and it's like if it doesn't sound real you can go and research or you ask the right questions so and you're at this stage on very connected to yourself and you don't let yourself be led astray easily not by the mass media and also not by people in general and this is also a card of your being able to see the truth of certain situations in your life right now and uh and you can call it by name you know like call it for what it really is so this is also a time that especially because some of you or many of you now have more time more free time and time to be with yourself then this is a time of um, that allows many of the repressed memories, repressed feelings to come to the surface again. They reemerge. And it's not an easy time, we have to say this. It's not easy because old wounds come up again and they hurt again. And But this is a time when you are able and strong enough to face them and release them but remember this is a process remember go small so it's not just you wake up oh my god now i'm cured not really but it's a process go step by step and but this is a wonderful time to see things clearly a wonderful time to face old demons and face old wounds call them by name acknowledge them and thank them for everything they did for you and let them go but it's a process like i say it's a lot easier to say it than to do it and i know that so so yes a lot there's so much beautiful energy here but then this is the cherry on top this is descending power this is a very unusual expression, descending power, because we all hear about ascending power. That's all what we aim for, to raise our vibration, to be there up high. But that's why this is so important, because your energy is already very high. Your vibration is already very high. What other people have to exercise and have to train and force themselves to get there you're already there so most of this exercise to raise your vibration when you do them and please let know in the comments if you really experience this it's like actually they bring down your energy because you are already rise so vibrating really high and you probably weren't even aware of that you know so your mission so to say is bringing that energy down in manifestation this is your true power because you're already up high, you know, and being with this high vibration doesn't mean that you're always hysterically happy. That's the, the mistake that many people do. And people think that by being hysterically happy, they're very spiritual or by being depressed, they're very spiritual. No, it's like you are how you are, you know, feelings fluctuate, but your inner energy is always there even if you're sad even if you're depressed there's something there your sun is always shining no matter what happens and that's why how i call it usually i have clouds in my sky but the sun is always shining it may be covered by the clouds today but my sun is always shining and this is your energy right this is your energy to know that your sun is always shining and you're always able to create. So you want you are a very powerful co-creator. You can change the world. That's what I'm telling you. If you put, uh, put your mind to it, if you start praying, when you send healing, you can change the world. So this is your inspiration. This is your message. First, I was confirming you. First, I was giving you the foundation to confirm who you really are but this is so to say your mission you are a powerful co-creator and of course you you won't be the only one watching this video i hope many other people will see it so what we're seeing here is a team is a tribe it's a community of powerful co-creators so if we all set our minds to it sit down and pray we can change the world to a better, beautiful, 
place where this love, this energy, this joy can shine for everyone. Wow, <laughs> this came out of nowhere and that was beautiful. So I think this was what the cards want you to know. And I'm done. So pile number two, this was your reading. I'll leave you with this. Think about it. And I hope it resonates and inspires you. And thank you so much to all that watch, like, and comment my videos and also subscribe to my channel. It means a lot to me. And at the moment, I'm not giving private readings. Maybe I'll start again next week. So if you'd like to have one, please bear with me a little longer. And um, if you'd like to follow me on Instagram, just click on the link in the description box below. So thank you so much and have a wonderful time. And I hope you and your loved ones are safe. Stay safe and healthy. Thank you. Bye-bye. So if you chose pile number three, this is your reading. So let's see the cards. We have Eternal Flame. We have Moonlight Goddess, Repressed Emotions, Healing, Reflection. We have Riddle Fisher, Divination, Seeking Out and Finding Answers. Number 22, She Feels She Knows. Hmm. And we have number 50, Goddess Persephone, Persephone and Ruby, the Inner Queen, Crystal Goddesses, 888. You know, I just noticed something. And this is really interesting. I don't know if you noticed because I didn't say the numbers, but now that I'm seeing them, we have number two, number three, 22 breaks down to four, 50 breaks down to five. So two, three, four, five. And if we consider this as an ace because it doesn't have any number, one, two, three, four, five. So this uh, is a progression. So the first thing that I get just for the, from this prog progression, there is movement, there's evolution, and there's transformation here taking place. Um, and it's an upward transformation. And what I get from the cards, just by looking at them now, and what they say and what they mean is, uh, this is a journey within. This is a journey within. And this is a time where a lot of healing is taking care, is taking care, is taking place within yourself. And it's also taking care of you, of your being, of your journey, right? And this is all about love, but not only um, romantic love. This is a, a higher love and it's like it's taking over you and it's like you're undergoing this process and the first steps of this process uh, can be somewhat somewhat painful right it's like a, a, a psychological uh, an emotional transformation that's taking place in your life right now within yourself and it's taking you to your true light, to your true self. And it's not easy. This is a process and it doesn't happen overnight, unfortunately, but it's something that is making you stronger. And all these cards, they are talking about finding the truth, finding the truth about a subject, about the situation or even a person. But the main subject here, again, is finding a truth within yourself. Starting seeing the things for what they really are, how they really are. And also rediscovering yourself. It's like maybe now at this moment in time, many of you have now the possibility of taking time and this time you're using it or it's just happening on its own. You're facing yourself, facing your true nature. And many 
ghosts of the past may come up again. Many uh, hurtful situations may come to the surface again. And this is like a, an underlying theme through all the three piles, interestingly enough. And start to listen to who you are and to rediscover, like I said, also your abilities, what you really can and cannot do, especially what you can do, what are your talents. So these talents are coming to the surface again. Maybe before all this, you didn't even have the time um, or the courage to follow your dreams and uh, to make use of your true talents. And I have the feeling here from, from these cards as well that many of you are artists, but maybe didn't have the courage to follow that or, you know, your reality didn't uh, allow you to take time uh, to pursue them. And many of you now that now have a bit of more time to yourselves now are considering this and having fun doing it and even working through these changes and working through your fears, your anxiety, through also this uh, pain that comes from the past. You're actually working this, you're integrating this in your art or in you, whatever your talent is. You know, maybe you write about it, maybe you paint about it, maybe you write a song about it, you know, maybe you even dance expressing your feelings about it. And this helps you through this process of um, recalibration. That's the feeling I get here. Yeah, that's a good word. It's a recalibration. There are less distractions. There are less uh, things that you had to do earlier. And now you have a bit of more time. Or it's not even a question of time. What I'm getting here is, yeah, okay, it's a recalibration. Some things are getting more important now in your life. Some things are taking the front stage right now. And um, they're becoming more important as an expression of who you really are. And you're also losing the fear of showing the world or showing your friends, you know, um, who you are. And this is like an exercise as well. Because, um, mm, okay, okay. Okay, sorry, I'm just getting these insights and these images. But because here, especially with the eternal flame, you are someone who has a really big heart. And someone who's very loving, very caring, but also very sensitive. And this sensitivity makes you more vulnerable than other people. And you know this. I know that you know. You know this. Um, and so one of your strategies in order to protect yourself is like closing your heart a little bit. You know, maybe some of the view more, maybe less. And it's not closing your heart and being cold hearted, not at all, because you have this eternal flame in your heart and just you have love for the for the humanity. You have love for everyone, for every being. Some of you may even be vegetarians or vegans because, you know, and if you could feed yourself from sunbeams, that's what you would do. You know, but please don't try it. It's really, really dangerous. Don't try it. You have to be like a master yogi in order to do it or to try it. So, but the thing is, because you wouldn't like to hurt a soul, you wouldn't like to hurt any living being, living being. Yeah. And so you have this powerful love for everything. It's just like all including. It's really, really beautiful, but you're very sensitive and the world outside sometimes is a bit harsh. And so you protect yourself, you close your heart. And this has the side effect that with time, uh, you may also um, lose sight or the connection to your heart. You know, you, you st start being more like uh, head, more in your head space the whole time, which is... There's no judgment here of being right or wrong. It's just how it is, you know. And then it's the decision, how do I want to proceed once you recognize this? It's just this, you know, there's no right or wrong. It's just decisions we make and consequences, that's all. 
in this case. And um, and what you hap- what is happening right now, and maybe you're feeling it, and maybe you've started some time ago, is going within your heart, you know, rekindling that um, communication, that language with your heart, really listening to it, opening up to it. And the thing that happens with it when you start opening to the language of your heart and heart and mind start working together, because remember, it's not one above the other. You also need your mind, like you need your gut as well, you know, the gut feeling. The three of them, they work together and they're very important. And if you get this uh, harmony, this equilibrium between them three, oh my God, it's, you are so centered. You're so in connection with yourself and with the universe then. Because that's what I was uh, trying to say. The side effect of this um, is, or one of them, is your psychic powers start to be enhanced. enhanced. Yeah. So you're opening up to them as well. You're opening to the language of your heart and the language of your heart is in deep connection to the language of the world. And so this love you have for the world is then spreading throughout the world as well because you're opening up your heart but again this is a transformation you're you're already undergoing and it takes step by step and if in some days you know you are closed off again when it comes to your heart because again your mind is very open sorry we got interrupted there the battery went out and so let's continue well as i was saying your mind is very open and sometimes people don't even realize that your heart is a bit closed off and but now you are opening again you know like i was saying before and this is very very powerful and you're feeling this as well and with this because you're getting in touch with your heart then we have here the moonlight goddess repressed emotions healing reflection so again old memories are resurfacing you know and this can be painful as well like um, i mentioned before this can be painful as well because you have to face them at that moment of course you always can choose to look the other way But the feeling I get here is that you're actually choosing to look at it and to work it and to release it again. And but now in a very positive way, in a way that doesn't weigh you down, in a way that uh, it doesn't hurt your heart anymore, because your heart has all these memories. And even scientists have now proven that the, the heart has memory cells in it. So all these painful memories that are locked within your heart, now they are coming into the open again to the to your conscious mind. And this is leading you to this transformation that I was mentioning before. And instead of repressing them now, you are letting them flow through your being, but in a positive way, like I was saying. It's like almost a therapy without a therapist maybe some of you are going through uh, to a therapist and i have the feeling that some of you may even be therapists yourself that not only you feeling this um changes or transformation within you you're helping other people going through this transformation as well especially here also with she feels she knows it's also and the inner queen the three cards together is like helping the world helping other people to go through this deep emotions through this deep transformation so if you're not a therapist yourself it's like your transformation will inspire other people to be their true selves as well and then again here with this one with seeking and finding answers so again you are maybe if you sorry i'll try that again maybe some of you are watching many um pick a card readings and taking tarot readings from some readers which is perfectly okay because we use the tools that we know of and that make sense to us in order to find these answers in order to make sense of a situation or a phase of our lives and because your goal is really to find answers is also to find 
um, a way of integrating this knowledge or what is happening around you and within you into your being in a positive way. And again, here also these two, because the, the riddle fisher has also to do with memories. So there are many things of the past coming to the surface. And there's also the feeling here of bringing things into light and seeing them in another perspective, in putting them in the right context and therefore finding your answers, being able then to integrate certain aspects of your being, certain situations of your past, of integrating them and in a loving way. But you, your aim is to find clarity. Your aim is to know exactly what role they played in your personality and how your personality is, where does some certain aspects of it, where do they come from? How were they influenced in order for you to be the person you are today or to have the reactions you have in certain situations? Because we are triggered by many things in our lives and sometimes we react in ways that we weren't expecting. And sometimes it's just our mind or our heart is actually um, associating a present situation to something in the past. And you are realizing this. That's why I'm, I was uh, talking about like a, therap a therapeutic work. Sorry, I cannot speak very well today, but let's move on. And uh, because if you do it with a therapist or alone, it's these results are going to be very important in your future. So the inspiration here is really to allow yourself to go within, to allow yourself to be very loving with yourself. And here with the inner queen is to use, for instance, the arts in order to help you through this process, you know, dancing, uh, making music, painting, drawing, um, expressing yourself or writing as well, writing poems, writing stories or writing your experience. And this is uh, will help you to work and integrate all these feelings within yourself. So the main word here that I've been repeating so many times already, and I'm sorry for that, is integration. It's really integration of all these things that come up into your being and also clarity. So there's healing, there's integration and clarity. You know, it doesn't have to be in this order, but there are main themes here coming up for you in this time. And here with She Feels She Knows is also, and also with these two, with the inner queen, uh, they refer also to situations that may cause fear, may cause anxiety, which in the times we're living right now, when I'm recording this, is um, they're understandable, you know. There are many informations, there are many things going around us that makes make us feel uh, insecure and make us uh, feel unsafe. But what the, these cards are saying are actually very beautiful. This, the storm is passing, is the message of these two cards. You know, the worst is behind you and that things were, are starting to get better. I'm not making here any uh, prognosis of uh, what's happening in the world. This is in your particular situation, okay? The cars are telling you the worst is over, things will get better, and they are telling you to hang in there, to hang in there, and um, to be strong, because you've been doing such a great work. You've been going through so much transformation caused by external forces, external situations, but also internal processes. And you are so strong and you are so brave because you're not shying away from this experience. You're facing it head on and things will get better. So what the cards are saying as well is help yourself, find ways of helping yourself to um, get into this feeling of safety, to this feeling of love and doing things that make your heart happy, that make you happy, even if it's just for five minutes. But those five minutes of happiness, of laughter, of having fun with something you love can change your mood for more than one day, right? And um, they're also asking you to be patient, because did you have now some restrictions that make you feel like caught in a situation you don't want to be in. But again, 
There is this transformation of not only within you, but in the world as well, and things are starting to get better. And here in your case, your inspiration is to acknowledge this beautiful transformation you're going through and to go through it with grace, with beauty, and to remember things are going to get better. And when this is over, also this transformation is over, you'll be someone who's so in sync with yourself that you will shine your true colors. Some people won't even recognize your energy because you'll be in an energy of truth, of integrity, and of strength, of power, of empowerment. And many of your fears will be recycled into inspiration at this time. Some of the fears will be recycled into love and, and to, into wisdom as well. And there you have the inner queen again. Because the inner queen, Persephone here in this case, is the queen of the underworld. So she's not afraid of facing the inner demons of unconscious themes of old wounds. She's not afraid to go, of going deep within, but she always comes to the surface every six months. So every time she comes out, she shines and delights into the, in, in the world around her and brings joy to the world around her as well. Because of her, there's springtime. And springtime is here. So Persephone coming is like the darkest times are almost over. Spring is here and better things will come. This is your message, Pile 3. I hope it inspires you and resonates. And thank you so much to all that watch, like and comment my videos and also subscribe to my channel. It means a lot to me. And I'm not giving any private readings at the moment. Hopefully I will start next week, but I'll let you know when, that, uh, when the time has arrived. And I hope you and your loved ones are safe and healthy and hanging there. Everything will be all right. So thank you so much.